New Zealand. First, uh, let me acknowledge that this webinar is organized on the land of the Wurundjeri people. And I acknowledge the elders, families and descendants who have been custodians of these lands for many generations. We are extremely fortunate to have with us today Professor Rafał Pankowski, a co-founder of Poland's leading anti-racist organization, Never Again. The mission of the Never Again Association is to promote multicultural understanding and to contribute to the development of a democratic civil society in Poland and in the broader region of Central and Eastern Europe. Um, Never Again is particularly concerned with the problem of education against racial and ethnic prejudices among the young. We know that nationalism has always been a feature across Europe's political spectrum. But in the recent decades, there has been a significant growth in voter support for right wing and populist parties. This trend is visible across the globe, including, of course, America, but even in the European Union Parliament. In Poland, the national radical camp uh, claims to be continuing Polish national traditions grounded in the Catholic fundamentalist ideology and um, attacking ethnic and gender diverse groups or minorities. So what do we know about the growth of the ultra-right in Poland and its support base and how do we challenge it? I hope that we can learn more about challenging nationalist extremism in, in Poland from Professor Pankowski, who is an associate professor at the Institute of Sociology Collegium Civitas in Warsaw, and who published widely on racism, nationalism, populism. Welcome, Professor Pankowski. Uh, well, thank you so much for, for this uh, kind introduction, and thank you for your invitation. I am I'm really honored and, and happy to be uh, meeting with friends from Australia, New Zealand, even if virtually. Um, of course, one of the one of the things that are different in Poland and in Australia, apart from the time zones, is the um, the issue of diversity. And of course, as you know well, Australia is is a very diverse, very multicultural society. Poland is not. Today, Poland is one of the most mono ethnic, mono cultural. Uh, societies in the whole of Europe, which is paradoxical uh, if you look at Polish history as a whole, because of course, historically speaking, Poland was used to be um, one of the most diverse countries in the, in the, in the whole of Europe. Um, um, today, the, the, the situation is very different, of course, as a, as a result of 20th century history, uh, the Holocaust, uh, um, deportations, uh, waves of immigration, and so on. Uh, today, the, per the percentage of, uh, of minorities, especially ethnic minorities uh, in, in Poland, uh, is very small. And actually, as, as we speak, there is a, a national population census underway, and it's very interesting to, to you know, to, uh, to see uh, the, the, the results, um, which, you know, probably will confirm uh, the, the, the image of, of Polish society as relatively uh, um, monocultural, monoethnic. This is not to say that minorities do not exist. Uh, of course they exist, but, uh, but the size of the, of the minority populations, minority communities uh, is, is very different from what it used to be uh, historically. Uh, of course, I should, I should add that the, 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 the situation is changing slowly also uh, as a result of migration, especially migration uh, from, from the Ukraine, which is very uh, important to the Polish labor market today. Um, but even if we can uh, uh, you know, observe the, the, the presence of, 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 of Ukrainian mi migrants in, uh, in Poland today, what is changing much slower um, is is the is the discourse on diversity or the uh, the mentality uh, that 
uh, that is related to um, to the issue of uh, um, of social uh, diversity accepting diversity as a value is generally speaking quite rare in in polish society although uh, you know having having said all that i would argue that a return to diversity for poland would be a return to normality uh, but um, you know this may be common sense to me and to many of you, I, I suppose, uh, but this kind of statement uh, would be considered very provocative and, and controversial in, in, in the Polish uh, context today, uh, where, as I said, uh, diversity uh, as a value is, is very rarely um, um, uh, talked about. Uh, the, the, the subject of, of our meeting, nationalist extremism, uh, you know, it consists of, of two terms which are essentially contested terms. And of course, we know that both nationalism and extremism uh, are not clear terms at all. They, 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 they have many meanings uh, for many different people and, and, and in many different contexts. And of course, if we, if we talk about the, the, the tradition of national nationalism in Poland, it has had different faces in different, uh, um, different forms. Um, on the one hand, uh, we have this tradition of what we may call civic nationalism, uh, which can be symbolized, for example, by, um, by the figure of Józef Piłsudski, um, which we normally wouldn't even call nationalism if we, if we uh, uh, speak in Polish. It, most people would, would, would simply refer to it as uh, patriotism. Uh, this tradition is not without problems vis-a-vis uh, -vis authoritarianism, for example, uh, uh, but by and large, it is not a tradition of exclusion. Um, there is another tradition uh, uh, which is much closer to the exclusionary form of ethno-nationalism, uh, which is, of course, uh, represented by the, uh, by the rival of, of Józef Piłsudski, uh, that is Roman Dmowski, the, the, the founder of the, of the so-called National Democratic Movement uh, in the first decades of the, of the 20th century. And, uh, and this ethno-nationalistic tradition uh, is in turn very strongly linked um, uh, with uh, Roman Catholic identity. And I would say in this context, uh, the, the, the religious element uh, of, of the identity is, well, is an identity marker more than anything else. It, it has much more to do with the, with the communal uh, uh, belonging uh, than this or that um, aspect of religious beliefs. Um, and I would say that the ethno-nationalist uh, understanding of, of national identity um, is, is pretty hegemonic in, in Poland today. Uh, so uh, so the, 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 the perception of, of Polishness as an ethnic and religious concept is predominant. And I don't think it is representative of this long history of Polish uh, multiculturalism and diversity, but it is, it is a fact. It is a fact that we, that we live with. And that has a lot of repercussion, repercussions uh, in the field of um, uh, Polish politics, but more broadly in, you know, in, in the field of um, Polish culture, Polish society uh, as such. Um, the other term, also very, very, uh, very problematic, extremism. Of course, it's, it's a relative term and the meaning uh, 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 seems to depend a lot on what we think is is the mainstream and uh, extremism might be uh, defined or perceived uh, in opposition uh, to to the to the social political mainstream and in the in the polish context uh, especially today it is more and more difficult uh, to see what what the difference is between so-called extremism and, and, and so-called uh, mainstream. Uh, I would say the demarcation line um, is increasingly blurred and uh, 
the more I studied, uh, the more confused I am about who is uh, an extremist and who, who who is in the mainstream. And I can I can um, um, I can provide more uh, more more examples of that. But the situation today, where we are dealing with a very acute crisis of democratic values, uh, where we see the discourse of nationalist extremism uh, sort of you know infiltrating mainstream discourses um, it did not happen overnight uh, it, it, it it it's been a process that that took years and decades and if we think back to the 1990s the 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 early period of the democratic transformation of poland uh, poland was actually uh, uh, held up many times as a as a model country as a, as a model of successful democratic transformation and a country without nationalist extremism or at least without significant um, um, extreme right or extreme nationalist movements uh, uh, which was never quite correct uh, i would argue because those groups existed but they were uh, relatively um, um, this, this, uni this united, uh, they were uh, relatively marginal, or, or at least when it, when it comes to their impact on um, on the political mainstream. Um, by and large, they were not represented on uh, on the level of uh, parliamentary representation, mm, but they existed. Um, gradually, uh, they managed uh, over the years to build a certain uh, base, uh, a social base, but I think importantly, it's also a cultural base. Um, and I would say the, 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 the sort of political or parliamentary representation of the movement is just the last bit of a, of a, of a much longer and broader uh, process uh, that um, that happened uh, since the 1990s, and I think even if some representatives of the political mainstream or, or or media mainstream back in the 90s admitted that there is something like nationalist extremism in in, in Poland, there was a very um, widespread uh, assumption, both spoken uh, and um, unspoken, uh, that it's basically a problem of the older generation. Uh, the, the generations, you know, the people who belong to the generation uh, um, who may have been socialized in, 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 in the 1930s, before World War II, um, they may have some, you know, prejudices, for example, anti-Semitic prejudices going back to that time, but sooner or later, that generation will disappear naturally and the, the, the younger people, people who are born and raised in a democratic society would automatically be more tolerant, more open-minded, uh, um, more progressive than, than the generation of, of their parents and, and grandparents. And as I said, I think, I think this, this, um, this assumption was was very widespread on the part of what we may call the liberal elites of Poland. And I, I'm not blaming anybody uh, for having that assumption back then, uh, but already in, 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 the, in the 1990s, when we created the Never Again Association, we questioned this, this very widespread assumption because we pointed to some phenomena that were maybe not noticed in the mainstream media or mainstream politics, but they were happening um, already on the level of, um, of youth culture, uh, on the level of, uh, um, of football culture, for example, um, on the level of um, um, the racist rock music scene. Uh, later, uh, soon later, the, the internet became a very important and popular tool for, for, for spreading um, um, uh, radical nationalist and, and, and racist uh, um, ideologies. Um, so in the end, what happened, and we see the, the results today, is, um, um, is something else. It is the opposite 
to to the expected uh, to the expected result. Um, namely, uh, we can we can talk about a transmission um, of radical nationalist ideology to the younger generation uh, in through those different channels I, I mentioned, and of course I, I, I could I could list even more. Uh, but um, uh, but if we look at sociological data from from the last decade or, or, or so, there are some really surprising or not surprising um, 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 results uh, showing that uh, the, the, the younger people, the people who are um, born and raised in, in a democratic society uh, are in fact not automatically more open-minded than their parents or grandparents, but in many cases they are actually more prone to um, to intolerance, to radical nationalist um, ideas and ideologies than their parents and, and grandparents. Uh, so it's a paradoxical situation, which I think very much, uh, you know, uh, goes against the, the gist of what we can call transformation science that, that, that was so uh, popular uh, in um, uh, in the 1990s and, and, and beyond. And I think some, some of the some of the foundations of, of, of this paradigm uh, of, of, of democratic transformation um, are very much questionable today. They, 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 they need to be critically revised uh, because the reality uh, um, disproves them. Um, so, uh, you know, throughout this, 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 this process of gradual buildup of the social cultural base, of the, of, of the far right uh, in in Poland, um, there there have been some watershed moments, and I think maybe you know different people would identify those watershed moments differently. But you, you could say one of them was the year um, uh, two thousand one, when when two radical nationalist parties uh, entered the parliament for the first time. Um, uh, uh, there was a brief moment in 2005, 2007, wh where those two parties were uh, were in a government coalition. Um, another moment uh, was 2010. Um, so the the, the, the small plane crash uh, when 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 the then president of Poland Lech Kaczyński and um, many many other political leaders were were, were killed uh, uh, tragically in a, uh, in a in a in a plane accident which uh, gave rise to um, to a big conspiracy theory industry uh, that uh, that became politically significant in 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 the next years but i would i would i would say in my view the the, the most crucial watershed moment uh, was the year 2015 uh, or to be more specific the summer of 2015. So I'm not even talking about the parliamentary, uh, parliamentary election um, or the presidential election uh, that, that, that both took place that, that year with important repercussions. But I'm talking about the, the European refugee crisis um, in the south of Europe, so not even in Poland. Um, and as we know, the European refugee crisis at that time didn't really affect Poland directly in any in any way because very few of of those refugees uh, um, went to Poland or intended to uh, to settle in Poland but um, the way the crisis was portrayed uh, in, in in Polish media and in political discourse um, was very negative and uh, and I believe it activated a lot of the what you could call dormant prejudices uh, that existed, but they were really amplified uh, through this highly negative uh, um, discourse, those, those, those highly uh, uh, negative frames of, um, of the discourse. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the situation coincided with the parliamentary electoral campaign. Uh, when we witnessed different right-wing and far-right parties and groups um, competing with each other on who would be more anti-refugee, anti-migration, anti-Muslim and, and nationalist. And what resulted was the, 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 the hardening, the, the, the radicalization of, um, of the whole of the right-wing spectrum. 
Um, and I, I, you know, I always knew as a, as a, as an academic, but also as a practitioner, that levels of um, of hate speech and, and and hate crime are are correlated. But uh, I think in in the summer of 2015, we we really saw for the first time. I saw for the first time they are they, they can be correlated so directly, uh, so tightly, so that the level of uh, of of, of of hostility, the level of hate speech expressed in in public immediately uh, was translated into physical attacks on different minorities, um, even if those minorities are, are are so small in Poland today. In 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 some cases, we we we, we um, well we uh, we documented we documented cases of attacks based on mistaken identity. So, for example, a group of Italian tourists uh, was attacked because they, they were mistaken for uh, um, for Arabs or Muslims or people from 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 the Middle East be, because of their slightly darker uh, skin complexion. Uh, so, some of the, those cases were really uh, uh, really absurd, but they they, they they resulted directly from 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 the negativity, uh, the negative discourse, the hostile. Um, uh, discourse and hate speech related to the uh, to the European refugee crisis, um, and I think since then we have seen this sort of you know heightened level of of hostility against different types of um, otherness, so different types of difference in society, not just uh, the refugees or or, or, or Muslims. There are few of them in Poland. The Muslim community is probably around twenty thousand people in um, um, in a country of thirty eight million. So it's a tiny, tiny group. Um, but we can definitely uh, uh, talk about the the, the phenomenon uh, um, known as Islamophobia without Muslims, um, which of course uh, um, is parallel to a much older phenomenon in Poland. Uh, known as uh, antisemitism without Jews, uh, which I believe is a term coined in the early 70s by, by Paul Lendwey, uh, writing about uh, um, uh, writing about Poland and other countries in Central Europe. Um, so the, the Jewish community today is, is also small. It may be 10, it may be 20,000 people in a, in a, in a, uh, in a country of, um, of, uh, of about 38 million. But also for the Jews, the, 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 the levels of, of hostility are uh, relatively high, certainly out of all proportion to the actual size of this, of this community in, uh, in Poland today. Um, now, I think there was a moment uh, soon after 2015 when some commentators, analysts uh, um, claimed that Islamophobia had now replaced antisemitism as the main form of hatred in uh, in the Polish context, and I I was never quite sure about it to be honest. Mm, I I thought well antisemitism would not disappear uh, so easily or would not be replaced uh, that that easily. Um, I thought um, maybe it's more correct to say Islamophobia supplemented antisemitism as a, as a major form of hatred in uh, in political discourse and in in, in in media discourses and unfortunately I, I was proved right in 2018 and I think many of you heard about this controversial uh, piece of legislation the so-called law on the national memory institute which um, criminalized some types of speech related to um, to the Holocaust, and uh, the complicity in the Holocaust of, um, of Poles. Now, what I think was even worse than this problematic piece of, of re legislation was the kind of, again, the kind of discourse that, that went with it uh, in mainstream media and, and, um, and, 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 and mainstream politics. Of course, it's nothing new for nationalists far-right extremists to, 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 to use anti-Semitism. Uh, 
But I think it was for the first time in many years, certainly the first time since 1968, where this kind of open hostility against Jews was, uh, um, um, was represented uh, so openly uh, in, in, especially in, in, in state controlled uh, media and by uh, politicians, including especially politicians from the ruling party. Um, and I think repercussions of, 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 of those weeks and months in uh, 2018 are still 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 present and they they they, they come back for example the, it came back during the presidential campaign um last year when the issue of the so-called jewish claims was again um, um manipulated out of all proportion to to the actual topic uh, uh, by the state-controlled media uh, and it played a role in the re-election of the of the sitting president um, but also this year again there is a controversy around the so-called uh, jewish claims which is very much exploited by by the ruling party and and and, and the media um, controlled by, by by the ruling party but there is a there is a third group uh, uh, that has also suffered um, very um, nasty uh, attacks from the the, the, the the ruling party and and its uh, and its media, it is the LGBT community, um, and uh, I would say that all those three three groups uh, or, or those three minority groups, um, minority communities, you know the the, the Muslims, Dash refugees, um, the Jews, and the LGBT community, they rotate as uh, as targets of um, of negative speech, as well as um, uh, different forms of, of, of discrimination or, or even physical attacks. Mm. And I think over, over those, those last years, uh, mm, anti-minority um, mobilization became one of the main tools of, of running the country, one of the main tools of, of political mobilization on the part of the, of the ruling party. Um, there is enough, there, you know, the, 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 the extreme right to the right of the ruling party still, still exists. Um, uh, and it is actually relatively strong, um, uh, but sometimes it's, it's virtually impossible to distinguish uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the arguments, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the statements uh, of 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 the extreme right and and, and the ruling party today, um, like I said, the the the, the extreme right uh, is now represented in in parliament again um, in the form of confederacja, so confederation, which includes some um, some far right nationalist extremist groups, uh, which you might even call neo fascist. Uh, mm, uh, currently, Confederacja uh, has 11 members of parliament, so it's not a big group, but I would, I would say um, their visibility and their impact on the broader political spectrum is, is actually quite, um, quite significant. And I, I, I believe they, they, they push the, 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 the frames of, uh, of Polish politics uh, if, you know, even more to, 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 to towards um, towards uh, the, the sort of nationalist extremist uh, um, uh, vision, uh, uh, which um, which I described. Um, now I think it would be it would be correct to uh, to to say something about the, 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 the you know, very important part of, of, of the context of, of, of the last year or two, namely the, the COVID pandemic. Um, and I think uh, Confederacja, the, 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 the far right, uh, has actually um, exploited the pandemic situation very effectively, um, spreading conspiracy theories around, well, around the, the, the pandemic itself, but also around vaccinations. And they also had, uh, you know, a big impact in terms of uh, 
more or less stopping the vaccination process in Poland today. Um, I think it's less than 50% of, of society that actually got the vaccination uh, and, and the rest are no longer interested. Basically, quite clearly, under the influence of those conspiracy theories, which are promoted especially by, 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 by several uh, leaders and groups within within Confederacja, within the, uh, the, the extreme right uh, party. They have been very effective in uh, promoting uh, mm, uh, those, mm, um, those, those theories uh, um, online, uh, especially on YouTube. And I think um, YouTube as a, as a company has a lot to answer for in terms of um, you know, enabling uh, uh, this, 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 this spread of, uh, of conspiracy theory, which in this case has a direct impact on, on public health. So I think it's one of those cases when we can actually illustrate how far-right propaganda um, has, a, uh, well, has a really dangerous impact on, on society in, 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 a very, in, in, a very, in a very direct way. Now, from what you, 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 you heard from me already, you, 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 you might understand I'm not terribly optimistic about the near future of, uh, of, of Polish democracy and, and democratic values in Poland. And of course, I only focused on some aspects of, of the crisis of, 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 of democracy in Poland, as I see it. There are many other dimensions, such as the rule of law, the... Um, um, Polish position vis-a-vis -vis the European Union, etc. Et but I, we can go back to it if if if, if you wish. Uh, um, but let me tell you something, maybe a little, just a little bit more optimistic by the end. And I always try to think of something optimistic, not to not to not to give a very depressing, um, uh, not to give a very very uh, uh, depressing um, impression. Um, what I think is, is actually optimistic in, in, in Poland today is that in the, in, in the sort of polarized context uh, of, uh, of Polish society today, uh, there are actually civil society groups that are challenging nat nationalist extremism, which is definitely, um, uh, defi definitely on the rise and it has some you know, big pockets of, of influence um, 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 among the young generation, as, as I said, especially young men. It, there is also an important gender dimension to, uh, to the phenomenon. But there are civil society groups also among Polish youth, but not only, uh, that openly challenge those, uh, uh, those uh, nationalist uh, extremist uh, tendencies. And uh, of course, the Never Again Association belongs to this to this category and thank you for the um, uh, uh, for, for introducing uh, uh, the mission of, of, of never again in, in, in the beginning of, of, of our meeting um, again I, I, I would say that because the, the scale of the problem grew um, the the scale of the challenge grew for us over the years too um, when we started in, in, in the 1990s the, the problem existed. Uh, but uh, um, uh, but it grew over over, over the years. Uh, but of course, it, it doesn't mean that we should give up. On the contrary, we believe we, sh we should also do do more uh, in in order to, to challenge it. And I can you know I, I can I can list a lot of different activities uh, that that we have conducted o over the years. But I think one important uh, I, I, would, I would say one important activity that belongs to the to the core of our um, our mission is uh, is the Brown Book, uh, which is a register of um, uh, hate crimes and the most extreme hate speech incidents, uh, um, which uh, um, which took place in Poland over the last decades. Uh, the Brown Book um, uh, was initiated by uh, by Marcin Kornak. Uh, who was the, the, the founder and leader of the Never Again Association for, for many years. Uh, um, Marcin Kornak uh, uh, passed away in, in, in 2014, but we, we continue what, what, what he started. And, um, and we believe it is, it is important to continue with documentation 
uh, with this kind of documentation uh, because it turns out to be much more reliable and uh, comprehensive than um, uh, than any statistics provided by um, uh, by institutions. Um, and it is a, a tool of uh, raising awareness uh, also also on on the part of public opinion. Um, last year, in, in May 2020, we um, published a report under the title The Virus of Hatred, um, uh, uh, which focused on, um, uh, on hate crime and hate, hate speech cases related to the pandemic. Uh, and that was quite early on in, 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 in the pandemic period, but we already then identified some of the patterns um, um, of um, of, of, of hatred uh, uh, related to, to the coronavirus, including the, the first uh, wave of um, hate speech and, and hate crimes against uh, the Asian community in, in Poland. Um, that also affected some of my students at, at Collegium Civitas, so I, I also heard some first-hand accounts of, uh, of, of the impact it had on, uh, on Asian students uh, in uh, in Warsaw, um, but apart from, apart from monitoring and publishing uh, uh, those results, we we also have uh, educational activities. And when I, when I say educational, I mostly mean non formal education because we think what is happening in the the system is is important, but it's also important what is happening outside of the system of formal education. And I think we see, it, we understand it better and better today, where the the system of formal education is very much under political pressure from 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 well from the far right. I would say with the current minister who who speaks, uh, who says things which would be unbelievable uh, from a minister even just a few years ago. Uh, um, uh, what he what he says about about minorities, about uh, women, and um, basically the, the, the system of formal education, including higher education, is, is in a very difficult situation because of the, the, the current political ideological pressure. So in formal education, I believe uh, uh, becomes ever more important. And um, um, what we do uh, is, is, is also using popular culture in, in a positive way. Um, so one of our uh, big campaigns is Music Against Racism, which includes uh, 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 records and, and festivals and, 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 and gigs uh, with a variety of styles and many, um, many friends in the music community are, are very supportive and very much involved in this campaign. Um, a second campaign, which is maybe more difficult, but also important, is uh, uh, is under the title, under the motto "Let's kick racism out of the stadiums," um, and the aim is to um, to challenge the the, the presence of far right influence uh, in um, in the football culture and and subculture. And also promote football as a as a positive platform uh, for uh, for communication, uh, you know, above barriers of um, of, of race or, or religion. Um, and I can probably go on and on talking about different activities of the Never Again Association. It is probably uh, uh, time for me to stop now. I'm, I'm very interested in your, in your comments and, 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 and questions. And if, 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 if there is something else that you would like me to elaborate, uh, please, please just tell me. But thank you again for your invitation. I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much. That uh, has been an amazing and really detailed account of uh, what has been happening, um, you know, in Poland, in in terms of uh, the growth of the of the uh, uh, nationalism and and extremism. So I invite everyone to ask questions. We've got twenty minutes at, at least to to have a discussion. So I uh, am not able to see everyone's cameras, uh, you know, in, on my screen. So you can uh, raise a hand. Um, Adam is first. 
uh, there is a, a, a tiny reaction icon with uh, at the bottom of your screen so you can use it or um, uh, just just unmute yourselves. So Adam first, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> first of all, thank you very much, um, Dr. Pankowski, for this most interesting and exceptionally well-delivered presentation on these worrisome trends uh, in Poland. And I've got a question about a very important institution uh, in the Polish life, the Polish Catholic Church. And I would like to ask you a question. What role, in your view, does the Catholic Church of Poland play in the rise of nationalistic, uh, xenophobic tendencies in Poland? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. This is a very important uh, part of the of the Polish situation. Uh, shall I answer straight away, or shall we collect more more comments yes. as, as you like? Uh, I I think uh, let let's uh, go one by one, and mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure the other questions will be probably a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, as I mentioned. Uh, very very briefly in, in the beginning this this sort of hegemonic idea uh, you know it, it exists the, the 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 sort of assumption that uh, or the stereotype is probably a better way, way to put it that you know every, every pole must be a catholic it is it is very much present although of course um it's it's, it's just not true <laughs> both both his Historically and uh, and in, in, in contemporary in, in contemporary uh, uh, times, um, but the, the 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 influence of the of, of the Catholic Church is uh, is very strong, especially political influence. Uh, you know, and the Church's influence vis-à-vis -vis the, the the current ruling party is uh, is uh, is very important, but. Again, of course, you know, Catholicism means means different things to, to different people, uh, including in Poland. Um, I think in the 1990s, we could still debate, you know, who is more representative of the of the church as as um, as such. Is it Radio Maria um, or is it the Godnik Powszechny? Uh, you know, Radio Maria is, is 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 much more than a radio station. It is a whole social movement with their with their own university, their own um, daily paper, and 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 the whole and the whole array of, of different front organizations, which is uh, uh, which is very politically uh, significant, uh, very significant politically, um, and it is also you know very you know very strongly influenced by by radical nationalism and anti-semitism in particular um Tygodnik Powszechny is let's say the, the opposite of that it is a, a, a liberal progressive uh, catholic weekly magazine that has existed for many decades already and uh, and it is also very well known uh, so, like I said, in the 90s, we could still debate, you know, who is more representative of, of, of the Catholic Church as, as such. And I think, unfortunately, today, this kind of debate does not really make much sense anymore, because it is quite clear that Radio Maria won, you know, the, 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 the competition uh, for, for influence within, within the Polish Church. Um, and I, I, um, I emphasize Polish Church, uh, because what, it's interesting and maybe surprising to you know to note that that one of the most unpopular figure, or I, I should say, hated figures, uh, um, for many Polish Catholics today, including uh, clergymen, is the current Pope, Pope Francis. Actually, there was there was a case in in in, in one of one of the churches uh, uh, that. In, in, in Poland, they, they they prayed for the death of Pope Francis, uh, which is quite something 
for you know for a Catholic church, uh, yeah. uh, and it's an extreme example. But but the, but the kind of hostility against against the Pope is very widespread in the Polish Church, and it is very much directed uh, to 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 some of the issues we already talked about, especially the refugee issue. Uh, so I would say this tendency in the long run probably leads to a, it leads to a crisis of the moral authority of the, of the church in Poland. Alex, but, um, but it also is important as a, as a form of uh, legitimizing the the, the, the the kind of right wing nationalist uh, that that dominates uh, the Polish political mainstream today. So that that would be my short answer to to a very important and, and complex question. But I hope I conveyed some of the bits of the um, of the, of the situation through this answer. Thank you. Thank you. And we've got France. Francie next. Uh, I think Matthew was also uh, uh, in, in the line. I'm not sure, Matthew, if you still are interested in asking a question. No, I had the same question as Adam. So okay, cool. put my hand so, down. Uh, so then we'll be Karin and Wojciech Zagawa. Oh, thank you very much, Gosia, And thank you very much, Professor Pawnkowski. It was very interesting, very grim as well, I have to say. And my question has to do with, um, you, you gave um, a picture which seems to suggest, and I don't know enough, of course, about the context of contemporary Poland, but that there are virtually no channels of counter discourse, whether an independent media, the press, or even the lack of effectiveness online. That is not specific to Poland. I think the far right movement seems to have found a very, very comfortable element with the online virtual world. The internet works particularly well for these groups, but there is nothing that um, in theory would prevent a counter discourse to emerge. So how do you explain this lack of counter voice? You, you gave us a good history and the whole reasons, but surely some groups, and I have colleagues and friends in Poland, I've been there a few times, are saddened, embarrassed, angry, a lot of strong emotion as the current status of their country. So where is the press? Where is the counter discourse? What's happening there? Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think what you said is very important when you, uh, when you mentioned, of course, some of those challenges are not just Polish challenges. Yes, a, a lot of those problems are, are, are global problems, such as the, the, the use and abuse of, of, of social media by, by far-right extremists. That, 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 is, that is very clear. Um, in this context, uh, I should mention uh, two research projects uh, uh, in which we are participating. One is called uh, Get the Trolls Out, and the other one is called uh, um, Open Code for Hate Speech, for Hate Free Communication. Both, both, both of these projects are international projects with, which allow us to compare the, the, um, the situation and especially the responsiveness of social media companies to, uh, to some of the, of the hateful expressions on their platforms. And I think it is very interesting because we see that the, the responsiveness is actually much better in, uh, in English, for example, when, when, it, when it's about contents in English. And uh, it's much slower uh, and much less effective in, uh, in, the, in, in the context uh, of, uh, of Polish language contents. Uh, so, so we are focusing our attention now on um, you know, persuading or lobbying those companies to take the, 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 the issue more, more seriously in, in the Polish context too, um, which is easier said than done, but we, we, 
we we uh, devote a lot of energy, uh, especially this year, to, uh, to 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 those issues. And now the 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 the, the second element uh, of, uh, of of your comment. Well, I do realize some of what I said sounds grim, and I I I realize that. But it wasn't exactly my intention to uh, to depress you completely. I maybe just did not emphasize the the, the, the you know the, the the more positive aspects of the Polish picture. You know, this counter discourse actually exists in Poland, and I, I would I would stress this is this is one really important part of the um, of the situation. So 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 it's not just you know um, it's not just a one sided picture I wanted to to, uh, uh, to present. Uh, uh, um, Polish society is polarized, which means um, the ruling party is generally, generally popular. Uh, the, even the more extreme far right is, is quite popular among, among some groups, but also opponents of, uh, of those tendencies uh, have a strong, have a strong and powerful voice, and and, and especially in independent media. Uh, State-controlled media are something else. State-controlled media are, are are completely in the hands of the ruling party, and uh, the, the the propaganda is, in my view, is is actually worse than than the propaganda of the state-controlled media in the eighties. It can be more manipulative or or, or more aggressive. But independent media still still exist in Poland, both press, you know, like Gazeta Wyborcza, uh, and uh, uh, you know, other papers, um, as well as television. Uh, and now, one of the main topics of uh, um, one of the main topics of political controversy in Poland, just you know, just these days, is the attempt by the by the ruling party. Um, to get rid of uh, TVN, which is the main independent uh, TV station, uh, which is actually owned by Discovery, a US, a US company. And it is one of the main voices of independent journalism, critical of, of the government, uh, as well as um, investigating and exposing some of the, um, some of the scandals uh, related to the extreme right and, 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 and the neo-fascist movement in Poland. Um, um, so yes, independent media have been under pressure, but they still exist. And I think that's, that's positive. So those channels for counter discourse still exist. And I think that's that's important to note too. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next question from Karin, please. Thank you very much. I am connected uh, from Leipzig, Germany, and in my research, um, I deal with um, nationalist expressions in popular culture, popular history, and so on. And I'm interested in the impact uh, neo-pagan communities have on the far right um, scene. Um, you mentioned the role of the Catholic Church and in general the neo-pagan movement is regarded as a marginal movement and but it certainly had um, some really radical tendencies in the 1990s and the early 2000s and then they obviously turned their activities more into um, cultural forms or cultural expressions and so they are not so much on the classical political scene of activism. So I would um, like to know how you would estimate the influence of them. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for 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 these questions. For this question, like like you said, the the neo pagan movement is not a major uh, factor in 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 in, in Poland. Um, but it just happens to be one of the topics of my own particular interest. So, uh, so I find I find this question really really interesting. Uh, of, of of course, given the the sort of you know historical role of the um, of the Catholic Church in Poland over the centuries, uh, and and also recently uh, as a sort of platform for resistance or a shield of resistance during the communist period as uh, as it was rightly pointed out in in, in the chat um, 
Of course, there is not a lot of discursive space for the neo-pagans, um, but they exist. They, they, they appeared in Poland, well, at least in the, in, in, in the sort of radical nationalist form in the 1930s. Uh, Zadruga was the name of the group, which was a kind of totalitarian pagan group that was both anti-Semitic and anti-Christian. And, uh, and like you said, it was resurrected, the movement was resurrected in, uh, in, 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 in certain forms in, in the 90s, also some cultural forms. It had an impact on, 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 on the extreme music scene in Poland, so parts of the national socialist black metal scene. And now we are really talking about the fringes of the subculture, yes, but, but they exist. What, what I find interesting, uh, for example, is the fact that those groups uh, participate in the annual march on the 11th of November in Warsaw, the, the uh, Independence Day march, organized by the well, supposedly Catholic nationalist groups. You might think if one group wants to be fundamentalist Catholic and the other group wants to be neo-pagan, they, 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 they should clash. But they actually happily march side by side on this one, 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 one day, which I think in a way confirms something I, I believe in strongly. Those, those groups, for those groups, religious beliefs are just elements of, of, you know, of identity construction or religion here is an accessory. What is really central is the nationalism. And, and racism uh, in, 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 the, in this case. Uh, this is why they can cooperate and participate in, in joint events uh, and initiatives, despite this supposed fundamental difference on, uh, on, on, on the level of uh, uh, religious affiliation. Um, but like I said, it's... Uh, it's an interesting topic to me. If, if, you, if you like, we can connect directly. I, I would be more than happy to, to, to send you some, some more materials on this, uh, on, on, on this phenomenon. Um, and before I forget, may I just uh, mention, I, uh, I put the address of the Never Again Association Facebook page in, in the chat. So I would encourage everybody who, 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 uh, who wishes to learn just a little bit more about the Polish situation and also the, 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 the activities of, um, of Never Again. You're very welcome. Oops, I think the connection problems, hopefully it will come through again quite soon. But uh, Karin, thank you for your question. I hope Rafael will come back quite soon. And uh, feel free to um, contact him directly in regards to your research as well. Uh, Wojciech, you, would, you will be next, hopefully. <laughs> um, let's see if we can um, reestablish the connection with Rafael. He is possibly possibly going to uh, try to reconnect Brad. So if you see uh, Rafał Pankowski in the um, he's still request, in the, he's still in the Zoom. Gosh, he's still in the Zoom. Okay. Um, maybe we can just send him a message. one state we've been we've been waiting so uh, uh Wojciech uh, uh, has a uh, the next question please well thank you for your presentation and uh, answers to questions uh, I've got a I've got a question you know which is more more general you know trying to reach to your you as a sociologist reflecting on on the state of affairs, you know. Uh, among uh, our friends, we often the question whether Polish is a sick society comes up. 
and uh, and uh, and I just wonder, you know, if this is the case, what gives the fuel to this uh, to this outrage, to extreme feelings? And of course, among the candidates comes the Holocaust and suppressed knowledge about the Holocaust and participation of our uh, society in the Holocaust. There were deportations on the eastern part, southeastern part of Poland of Polish citizens into Soviet Union and of course, Akcja Wisła. Uh, there was a, but apart from this sort of a suppressed evil of which layers we can find in our recent history, uh, there is also a sense of humiliation, right, which definitely in my, uh, as much as I know, was driving uh, the rise of Nazism in uh, Germany. And uh, I think that uh, the migration from villages to the cities uh, also resulted in quite a wave of uh, aggression in the cities. I remember it in Warsaw from late 50s, early 60s. Uh, and in that context, this one million and more of Poles that traveled to Western Europe, one would have thought that they learn about inclusiveness, about diversity, but maybe, maybe working in uh, sausage factories and as the lowest laborers, uh, they came back with a sense of humiliation again, uh, sort of uh, raising this bar of uh, uh, suppressed anger. So that's my question, whether you've got any thoughts about that. Well, thank you so much for, for bringing up such important and, 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 and difficult issues uh, to the conversation. I, I, I think I, I, I certainly do agree with you. Uh, uh, many of those historical traumas uh, are still, in a way, um, impacting the, the reality today. Uh, they have not been dealt with um, enough. Uh, and I think this is one of the reasons why the controversy about the history law in 2018 uh, was, was so huge because it seems such a sensitive issue for many different reasons and on, on, on many levels. But Poland is probably one of the few countries anywhere, you know, where, where history makes front page news uh, regularly. Um, in most other countries I know, it would be on page 10 if, 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 if reported. In, in Poland, it's actually one of the main, you know, sort of history is one of the main battlefields uh, um, and and one of the main um, you know elements of, of contemporary politics, and of course it's not accidental that the ruling party made politica historiczna, no, the policy of history or the politics of history, one of their main um, um, one of their main issues or, or or one of their main fields of activity with uh, with huge amounts of public funded, funding uh, invested into you know, museums and, 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 and a lot of other monuments and a lot of other initiatives uh, presenting this very one-sided heroic view of, 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 of Polish history. Um, and I, I, I think I, I agree with you, this is very much related to, to those unprocessed historical traumas uh, um, over over decades or even centuries, um, but one other thing you you mentioned is, is also my my particular uh, interest. It is the the diversity of experiences of uh, of Polish migrants in the West, and especially in the recent years. For example, in the UK, as as we know, the Polish community, you know, over the last decade or, or so, or maybe two decades, um, um, it grew to, 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 to about one million people. So it's, 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 it's a big group. Um, and 
like you said, we might we might think uh, um, you know they they um, they had the experience of living in a in a, in, a, uh, in an open society in a diverse multicultural society that that would have a, a positive impact on their uh, on 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 their general outlook uh, um, and and their uh, attitudes vis-à-vis. Um, -vis social diversity it is not always the case and one of the sort of interesting if paradoxical uh, phenomena in, in in the last years is the the activity and the presence of the polish uh, nationalist far right in the uk uh, among the migrants uh, the polish migrants so so uh, so those groups uh, that uh, that are now known as um, as confederacja they they have been active in the uk for 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 for, for the last years so so it's it's paradoxically the you know the the, the groups that are violently anti migrant in poland at the same time being active among the polish migrant communities abroad uh, um, which is part of the, the sort of more more more, more general uh, phenomenon of internationalization of nationalism. Um, one other example of, 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 of this phenomenon is the participation of foreign nationalists in the march in Warsaw on the 11th of November, which I already mentioned when we talked about the, the neo-pagans. This is a very big event. It started as a small event uh, um, um, around uh, um, 2009, 2010 with just a few hundred young men marching um, with um, 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 with nationalist slogans uh, and over the years it grew it grew and by now it became the biggest far-right event anywhere not just in poland but internationally uh, which has been attracting uh, you know racist and, and, and fascist groups from all over europe and beyond um, mm, and many of those groups are, are very different, or they may be in conflict with each other, let's say Slovak and Hungarian nationalists, but they managed to, to, to come to Warsaw on this one day and participate in one event, which I think is, is a really interesting illustration of the, of, 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 of the globalization and internationalization of the phenomenon of, of right-wing extremism. But um, thank you again for, 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 your, uh, for your comments. Thank you so much. And next question uh, from Alexandra. Uh, you need to unmute yourself, please. Sorry, I enjoyed your presentation very much. Thank you for your effort and participation. I am interested in uh, development or emergence of elite education in Poland. And also I see the elite schools, particularly secondary elite schools, um, as uh, representing to some degree different political and social outlooks of the elites that select those schools. Do you see any possibility that elite schools might actually counteract uh, this development of um, extreme nationalism, or are some of those schools actually actively promoting uh, the, the, those trends, uh, particularly those schools who may be connected to um, some movements like, uh, feel like uh, um, point of view of Opus Dei or Ordo Iuris and such organizations supporting those schools. And uh, what I worry about that with the negative uh, reputation of, uh, of uh, public schools in, in Poland, some of those uh, private schools or independent schools might actually attract different uh, populations of influential elites, either political, cultural, or social. So basically, uh, I would like thank to you. hear maybe your view on that. I, I know mm -hmm. that schools and private schools are very insignificant still, um, mm -hmm. number-wise, but they, they might be influential in 
promoting uh, some communities that have influence. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, well, as, as I mentioned, the, the, the educational system as a whole is, you know, is now very much under pressure, direct pressure, uh, uh, which, is, which is rooted in, uh, in far-right ideology. Um, mm. And I think that applies to all the levels of the system and all the elements of the system. Um, um, so now it is it is just one ministry, the Ministry of Education and Higher Education. Uh, mm, mm, I know more about higher education from my direct experience, um, mm, but I think that, that, that you know the, the, the pressure is, uh, is 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 there at every level. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are also some independent schools and independent institutions of, of higher education, which, you know, let's say schools created by parents and, and so on, um, and, you know, so-called social schools. I went to, uh, uh, um, to a social lycée. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to translate it into English, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so, 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 so some of those schools have a different spirit, uh, definitely. Um, but they, they in, 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 in one way or another, they are also part of the formal system, which uh, at the end of the day is controlled by the ministry. Mm. Uh, so they may be less directly prone to, to, to this kind of pressure, or they may, may, may be more resistant to, to, to this kind of ideological pressure, but the pressure is, is, is still there in, 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 many different, in many different ways, uh, in, in, you know, in, in, in terms of funding, in terms of recognition of qualifications, and so on and so on. Um, so I think there is a real danger uh, uh, of the Polish educational system becoming uh, like, the, like the state-controlled media becoming a tool of very one-sided, um, crude propaganda, um, you know, rooted in, in, in nationalist ideology. Um, I, I very much fear about, about the near future of, 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 the, of the Polish educational system. But of course, as we know, you know, historically, we, we know it well that um, um, this kind of crude propaganda sometimes backfires on those who try to uh, uh, to employ it and uh, we know it backfired in in the in the 80s uh, and it will probably backfire again uh, but the cost of you know ruining the, the polish education would, would would still be very high and uh, and i i think it's not just my my own perception i think it is the perception of of, of many others who are you know, dealing uh, or, or who are part of the educational system in, in one way or another. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we uh, we will need to conclude very soon. Uh, uh, thank you for covering such a broad spectrum of, uh, you know, linked issues. Uh, uh, so, so, so that was very, very interesting, and and obviously uh, all the comments in the chat confirm and add some thoughts. Um, so, thank you so much for for uh, making time and presenting for us today. As you can see, there is a uh, really deep interest in um, in Australia and New Zealand on what is currently happening, and really deep interest in. Uh, you know, socio-political uh, effects as well, not only within Poland, but also, you know, uh, globally of, of those uh, trends, uh, worrying trends. Uh, so thank you so much. And thank you everyone for attending uh, tonight, today, uh, for uh, wh wherever you are at the moment. Uh, we, we had guests from clearly Europe and uh, Australasia. So thank you so much. And uh, let's maybe uh, give a round of applause <laughs> for this presentation. I'll be probably, that will be me on the, on the microphone, but thank you so much. And we wish you and your association uh, all the best in um, 
continuing your uh, amazing work. Uh, thank you for posting the Facebook link. Uh, I can see that people have acknowledged that and, and, and uh, will be definitely accessing through. So, uh, and we will be paying close attention. And if uh, there is anything um, you need from organizations like ours in Australia, please feel free to contact us and we will of course use uh, our uh, networks to, to support your uh, activities. Thank you, thank you very much. Once again, it's been a real uh, honor for me um, to meet with you. Thank you so much for all the, all the comments. Um, um, and um, if I can be useful in, in future, please let me know. Of Thank course. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.